What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are putting head to head DaVinci Resolve versus Final Cut Pro to see who has the best auto tracker. Let's get into it. I really wanna break this competition down into three factors. Ease of use, what can you do on top of it? Like can you add effects? How hard is it to do that? You really have to dig to find something else as well as the final one has got to be how good is the tracker? Is it doing a good job? Because that is kind of important for what we're doing. So let's start off with Final Cut Pro first. So I went ahead and loaded a clip in from ArtGrid. Thank you so much for providing this clip. So what we need to do is add a tracker. So we're gonna go to the tracker. We're gonna hit the plus. It's gonna bring this little box up that we can hover and bring on top of our screen. We're gonna kind of hover that, bring it in where we want. I've kind of noticed with this one specifically, you just need to get it in the general frame of it. And that's pretty good. Right up here on the left, you can hit analyze. We're gonna hit that. We're gonna let it do its thing. It did a pretty good job. Let's play that through, see how that looks. Not terrible. And I do like that you can go in here and you can actually move this and you can just add a keyframe. Ease of use of finding the tracker, I'm definitely gonna give an eight out of 10 because it's really easy to find, not a lot of problems. But again, if you don't know where it's at on that tab or you get kind of confused with how many combinations you can do, that may get a little complicated. So that's why I'm ticking off a few points. Next thing I wanna do is add an effect on top of it. So we're gonna go to the effects tab. We are gonna to go to all, and I am just gonna search blur, and it's gonna bring up a Gaussian blur. We're just gonna drop that right on top of here. We are gonna hit our add mask, so it actually does the entire thing. I'm gonna bring this down here. Let's go ahead and make it a little bit more square, and we'll rotate it a little bit, something like that. And I am gonna turn the amount down because we don't need it to be crazy a lot. I could probably feather that a little bit better. Now, this is where most people get lost and it is a little bit confusing, is on the tracker. You hit this little drop down, hit object track, and then we are just gonna link it. Again, blur is not amazing. I could fine tune that a lot better. <laughs> I gotta give that a five out of 10 for not making it as customizable as I would like it to be. I do understand you can go in here, you can add a mask, you can perfectly draw around it. However, I don't like that you can't just do that directly in the blur that you're adding on top. Overall results of the mask on top of it, I would give about a seven out of 10. There's some fine tuning they could do, however, I gotta give them kudos for even having it built in now. The new auto tracker in there does work really well. Now, before we go any further with the competition, let's talk about the sponsor of our video, and that is Artlist. Artlist has been one of my favorite places to get music, and they've just updated it to make it even better for content creators with introducing the personal subscription plan. This month to month subscription plan is ideal for people that are covering YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, any content creation that's living on a platform. You can either be billed yearly or pay month to month, which I know is something that has held a lot of people back from Artlist. This new month to month subscription plan is definitely geared to help you guys out. I will have links in the description below. Definitely check them out. Thank you so much Artlist for supporting my channel and other creators just like me. Now let's dive over to DaVinci Resolve and see how it handles it. First thing I gotta say is Final Cut does definitely have the upper hand, as in when you're in the edit tab and you're on the video, you can't just scroll down and have a you know power window or a mask on top of it, which DaVinci Resolve uses power windows. Uh, you actually have to either go into the color tab or the fusion tab. This is something I've said for a very long time is I would like to see an update to DaVinci Resolve that brings in like the masking tool from like Premiere Pro or that we just had in Final Cut Pro. I would like some of the things that may already be in other tabs, I would like them to be in the editing tab as well. So there's a couple different ways you could do this mask inside DaVinci Resolve. I personally just like grabbing the clip, hitting option, bringing it up, and then I've got a duplicate right there. You can do multiple masks to where you don't have to do this. However, I just it, it's easier for me. I just quickly just duplicate the clip and it's done. So then we jump inside the color tab. We make sure our one is selected. We make sure we have an alpha output, connect the blue to blue, and then we are gonna draw the mask. We're gonna click on the power window right here. And I already like that there's multiple options to be able to do different styles of masks. That's something I wish Final Cut Pro had. We're gonna just draw a mask around our little window right there. 
just like so. We are gonna go ahead and soften it a little bit. We're gonna do the outside a little bit more. Then we're gonna jump over to the blur. Again, it's already all right there. So again, it's a little cumbersome when you're first going in there, but it is kind of nice because everything's laid out. We're just gonna crank our blur quite a bit, just like so. Then we're gonna hop right over here into the tracker. And in here, you can either stabilize the footage or you can track it, whatever you want to do. We're wanting to track it, so we're just gonna hit play, let it do its thing, and it's done, already done. Then we can hop back over here. We can play that through. And that tracked it ridiculously better, like a thousand times better. Now, before you start blowing me up in the comments, I am a DaVinci Resolve guy, so I may be a little biased to what this is over Final Cut Pro. I gotta say, putting them head to head, I feel like DaVinci Resolve is really taking the lead and really smokes Final Cut Pro specifically in the masks. There's just so many more options you can do. And maybe that's why they haven't brought some of those features into the edit tab of DaVinci Resolve is because then you just have so many things laid out right there. You've got your tracker, your blur, if you wanna change the color. I'm not trying to start a war down in the comments below. However, I would like to hear your opinions and thoughts. Which one you think did better? Do you like one over the other? That's it for me today, guys. If you like this video, if you wanna see more of it, if you wanna see more with DaVinci Resolve versus After Effects or Premiere Pro versus Final Cut Pro, whatever you're wanting to see, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. You guys are amazing. I'm the Iron Giant. See you next time. Peace.